In this lecture, we'll introduce the concept of a discrete random variable and its associated probability mass function. And we'll show how we can use the probability mass function to evaluate the probability that a discrete random variable takes a value in some interval. Well, to begin our introduction to discrete random variables, let's start with a simple experiment where we toss a coin until we see heads for the first time. And to make this a little more interesting, let's assume that the probability that we see heads on any given toss is equal to some number p. For a fair coin, this probability is equal to 1 half, but for this example, we'll let it take some arbitrary value between 0 and 1. If we get heads on the first toss, then we will only need to toss the coin once, and this will happen with probability p. The probability that we see tails on the first toss is 1 minus p, and the probability that we then see heads on the second toss is p. So the probability that we'll need two tosses to see heads for the first time is the product of these two probabilities, which is 1 minus p times p. Now using this same logic, the probability that we'll see heads for the first time on the third toss is 1 minus p times 1 minus p times p, or 1 minus p squared times p. And continuing this idea, the probability that we'll see heads on the nth toss is equal to 1 minus p raised to the n minus 1 power times p. The idea of a random variable is to assign a symbol like the capital letter X to the random event, which in this case is the number of tosses until heads show for the first time. The collection of probabilities that we assign for all the values this random variable can take is called the probability mass function. And the notation we'll use will be something like this. That is, a small p with a subscript that identifies the random variable, in this case the capital X, and typically a lowercase variable like lowercase x or n or k as an index to the values that the random variable can take. Here, for instance, is what the probability mass function looks like for this example for the situation when the probability of seeing heads on any particular toss is equal to 1 fourth or 0.25. A random variable that has this probability mass function arises in many situations and is given the name geometric random variable because of the geometric or exponential decay in the probability mass function. Now the set of values that the random variable can take is called the range for the random variable and we'll often use a script x to represent the range which for this example I'm showing here are the values 0 0.4, 1.0, 1.4, 1.6, 2.4, and 3.0. One of the most important properties of a discrete random variable's probability mass function is that the sum of all its values over the range is equal to 1. This means, of course, that the probability that the random variable takes one of the values in its range is equal to 1. Suppose that a random variable had a range equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and its probability mass function took the value shown here. Because the probability mass function has to sum to 1, the unknown value for the probability mass function at 5 can only take one value, and that is the one that makes the sum of all the probability masses equal to 1. And because the other values of the probability mass function sum to 31 over 32, the value for the probability mass function when n is equal to 5 must be equal to 1 over 32. Now let's take a look at some examples of common discrete random variables. A discrete uniform random variable takes its values over a discrete interval from a to b and over that interval the probability mass function takes a constant value that is equal to 1 divided by b minus a plus 1. And as its name suggests the shape of the probability mass function is uniform over its range. As an example if a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 5 then the probability mass function is equal to 1 fourth over the interval from 2 to 5. 
A Bernoulli random variable is a discrete random variable that can take one of two values, and often those two values are 0 and 1. The probability mass function is determined by specifying the probability, p, that the random variable takes one of its possible values. The probability that it takes the other value, of course, is equal to 1 minus p. Sometimes we'll associate one of the two values as a success and call its associated probability the success probability. For the example I've shown here, the outcome 1 might be called the success, and the probability p would be the success probability. The probability mass function for a Bernoulli random variable takes the simple shape shown here, where it is only non-zero over the two possible values the random variable can take. Now a geometric random variable results when we create a sequence of Bernoulli random variables and count the number of trials that are needed to attain the first success, just like we did in that introductory example. For the random variable to be equal to n, then, we would need to have n minus 1 failures followed by 1 success. Therefore, the probability mass function is the product of n minus 1 failure probabilities, which are equal to 1 minus p, times 1 success probability, which is equal to p. And because the lower limit on the number of trials is 1, but the upper limit is infinity, the range for this random variable is simply all of the positive, non-zero integers. The probability mass function always begins at the value p and has an exponential or geometric decay going forward through its range. A binomial random variable results when we create a sequence of Bernoulli random variables with, let's say, capital N trials and count the number of successes that occur where each success occurs with probability p. We could, for instance, flip a coin 20 times and count the number of times we see heads. An example of this probability mass function for 20 trials with a success probability equal to 0.25 is shown here. And because the number of successes that occur must be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to the number of trials, the probability mass function for a binomial random variable is equal to 0 for all integers outside of this interval. The Poisson random variable is an important example of a discrete random variable that comes up in many engineering and science applications. This random variable's probability mass function is usually specified with a parameter called lambda that determines the shape of the distribution. Here, for example, is the probability mass function for a Poisson random variable when the parameter lambda is equal to 10. The mass function is equal to 0 for negative integers, but has a non-zero value that is possibly very small for all positive integers. Now one common use for a probability mass function is to determine the probability that a discrete random variable takes its value in some interval. If, for instance, we want to know the probability that a random variable is greater than or equal to some number n1, but less than or equal to another number n2, then we sum the values of the probability mass function over that interval. As an example, let's determine the probability that a geometric random variable is greater than 3 and less than or equal to 40 when the success probability for the geometric random variable is equal to 0 0.1. For this example, we need to sum the probability mass function from 4 to 40 because 4 is the first integer that is greater than 3 and 40 is the last integer that is less than or equal to 40. And then for a geometric random variable, remember the probability mass function has, the f has this form where p would be equal to 0 0.1. Now to evaluate the summation, it is useful to use a software tool like MATLAB or Mathematica. So let's take a look at how we might use those tools to help solve a problem like this. Now if you're unfamiliar with any of the functions I use within these packages, be sure to check the manuals or search online for more help on those functions. Well, to use MATLAB, I'm going to put some commands into a file that I've called example1, or for short, ex1. And I'll begin by first establishing a value for the probability parameter, the success probability, p. 
and our problem stated that that needed to be 0.1 so I'll do that and next I'll set the range values and I'll use a variable k for this summation and I'll set those equal to uh, a sequence of numbers that range from 4 increment by 1 all the way up to 40 and then I'll define the probability mass function px as 1 minus p raised to the k minus 1 and then I'll multiply that times p and then the probability that our random variable is in that interval that we've defined by k will be equal to the summation of the probability mass function over all of those values that we've set up in k. Now if I save that file and then go down to the command window and execute it by simply typing its name I then should have a variable named p that I can examine its value and it turns out to be 0.7142. So the probability that this geometric random variable is in the interval from 4 to 40 should be 0.7142. Now to use Mathematica, we'll start with a blank notebook here. I've put a heading, call it a example 1. And what we'll do is I always find it useful when using Mathematica, if we're going to have an independent variable that we're ultimately going to sum, it's always very helpful to first tell Math Mathematica that you'd like to clear that variable. And so let's use the variable k for our summation. In our first line, we'll, we'll clear that. And then we'll set up our uh, success probability, which is equal to 0.1. We can set that up. And then we'll define the function, the probability mass function, px, and that's equal to 1 minus p raised to the k minus 1. Now that's our independent variable. And then times p. And then we'll compute that probability. I'll call it capital P. And that's going to be equal to the summation of px over the interval where we index k going from 4 to 40. So these are all commands that are compatible with Mathematica. And now if we want to examine that variable p, once again we have the value 0.714219. So that's the way we use Mathematica to solve for the interval probability. Now for another example, let's determine the probability that a discrete random variable takes a value that is even when the random variable has a probability mass function of the form a times n squared over the range of integers from 1 to 10. Because this constant a isn't specified, we'll need to determine its value. But we can do that by picking it so that the probability mass function sums to 1. And once we've determined the value for the constant a, then we can evaluate the probability that the random variable is even by summing the probability mass function over the even integers in its range. And as I did with the previous example, now I'd like to show you how to solve this summation by using MATLAB or Mathematica. And again, if you're unfamiliar with any of the functions I use within these packages, be sure to check the manuals or search online for more help on those functions. Well, to use MATLAB, I'll set up a, a script file I'm calling ex2, for example, 2, and we'll start putting some commands into that file. The first thing I'll do is set up a, a variable that will correspond to the range, all the indices in the range for the random variable. And that goes from 1 to 10, and I increment by 1. Next, I'm going to evaluate that summation that I need to evaluate the unknown constant a. And if you recall what that is, that was the summation of n squared over the range. 
So I'll call that variable s, and then I can assign to the parameter a a value that's equal to 1 over s. So now I can set up the probability mass function, and that'll be equal to a times n squared. Now I need to sum that probability mass function over the range from 1 to 10, but only including the even values. And the way I'll do that is I'm going to set up a logical variable that's even. And the way I'm going to set this up, I'm going to look at everywhere the remainder of n, when I divide it by 2, is equal to 0. And if you think about it, that might be the way that you were once introduced to the concept of an even number, or the definition of an even number. So now, p is going to be equal to that probability. That'll be the sum of the probability mass function, but now I'm going to use this logical variable and restrict that summation over only the even indices. Now I'll save this file, and I'll execute it by simply typing its name. And now the variable p contains the value 0.5714, which is the probability that this random variable takes an even value over its range. All right, now let's use Mathematica to solve this same problem. This time we're going to use the independent variable that indexes our probability mass function. We'll use the variable n for that. And again, it's a good habit using Mathematica to clear that at the onset. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up that unknown parameter a, and this is going to look a little more direct than it did in, in MATLAB. So that's 1 over the summation of n squared as n goes from 1 to 10. That's exactly as we wrote our equation. Next, now that we've set up a value for a, we can set up our probability mass function, which is a times n squared. And then to evaluate our probability, we're going to sum the probability mass function over the index n. And now we want to sum from 1 to 10, but only the even values. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a Mathematica function called select. And then we're going to set up a range from 1 to 10. And within that range, select only the even values. And again, if you're unfamiliar, which you very likely are, uh, this might be the first time that you've seen some of these functions, take a look at the manual for Mathematica or do a search online for the select function in Mathematica, the range function in Mathematica, and the even Q in Mathematica. And hopefully you'll find that these are useful tools that you can use later in your study of probability. So now that we've done that, we have the variable p. And if we want to examine its value, we'll see 4 sevenths, which I think you can verify is 0.5714.